Charles Bonnet syndrome, or CBS, is an unsettling phenomena present in visually impaired individuals that recently started to gain attention from researchers and specialists due to the vast amount of patients who have shared similar experiences. All patients who experience CBS have some sort of visual impairment or an ocular disease which causes loss of sight, including glaucoma, cataracts, macular degeneration, and corneal disease, just to name a few. Although the syndrome has only recently been given attention, specific case reports of it go back decades. The first report traces back to 1760, when a Swiss naturalist and philosophical writer by the name of Charles Bonnet described the visual hallucinations that his psychologically healthy grandfather was experiencing. Charles's grandfather would see men, women, carriages, and buildings, even though he was blind as a result of dense cataracts. The hallucination Charles's grandfather had set the stage for what CBS was. That is, an individual with impaired or lost vision who experiences recurrent vivid hallucinations and no background of mental health issues that may contribute to the hallucinations. The sad truth is that the syndrome is highly unknown by eye care professionals who are meant to treat patients with vision problems, and healthy patients are often misdiagnosed with having a mental disorder. In fact, 30% of patients do not actually fear the hallucinations. They fear that there is something wrong with them, when in reality their experience is just not understood. Patients have seen a variety of different hallucinations. Patient 1, an 80-year-old woman who has age-related macular degeneration and glaucoma with a history of CBS, who, after experiencing horrific bushfires in southern Australia in 2009, reported seeing frightening images such as a prickly coat of hair on her dog, spiral wire-like hair coming out of her family's heads, and the faces beginning to melt like wax. Patient 2, a 92-year-old woman, has macular degeneration and describes seeing a bunch of grapes on a dinner table. Although she knew they were not there, she would reach out and try to touch them but could not feel anything. She often sees clouds of blossoms with intense colors. They would appear and disappear suddenly. Patients have reported seeing very colorful shapes and figures which can be enjoyable for them, however, can become very overwhelming at times. 72% of hallucination reports in CBS are in color. These colors are reported to be more vivid and bright than anything these patients have seen. Patient 3, an adult male, has reported even seeing strange miniature people moving from left to right, wearing outfits resembling the Oompa Loompa characters from the Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory movie. Hallucinations can greatly vary and can have even no particular significance to the person whatsoever. New technology has allowed neuroscientists to study the brain while in action allowing us to discover that the neurons are able to fire without any visual stimuli. This is the result of the brain's ability to compensate for the lack of visual activity in visually impaired individuals. Neurons become hyper-excitable and will fire, which causes an individual to hallucinate. The patient experiencing hallucinations related with forms and shapes would be linked with the firing of neurons located in the primary visual cortex. However, there are very specialized areas that are in charge of firing for specific hallucinations that are experienced. For example, when people experience hallucinations involving faces, and a specific part of the brain called the fusiform gyrus will fire. Moreover, there is an anterior part of the fusiform gyrus that is linked with the hallucinations involving the foreign faces, such as the hallucinations that patient 1 was experiencing. As measured by fMRIs, when patients experience hallucinations involving color, such as patient 2 with the brightness in color in the blossoms, they also experience the firing of the middle region of the fusiform gyrus. However, other parts of the brain, such as the MTB5, are linked to hallucinations involving motion found in patient 3. As the geriatric population increases, the amount of acquired vision loss will also increase. As a result, there will be an increase in those affected by Charles Bonnet syndrome. We need to understand and recognize this condition so these individuals can receive the proper care they deserve. Due to the lack of awareness, those with CBS are in fear of being labeled insane or crazy and are afraid of being diagnosed with a mental illness. These fears will often discourage patients from discussing their hallucinations and seeking help to manage CBS. Becoming familiar with the syndrome so optometrists and even psychologists can properly identify CBS, understand it, and help patients deal with it is extremely important. 
By learning more about Charles Bonnet syndrome and continuing research, we can take care of our loved ones and those in our communities who may be experiencing this and are afraid.